My guest is Janice Stein. She's head of the Monk School of Global Studies. It is. That's the new name. Uh, thank you for coming, Janice. It's terrific to have you. I uh, want to talk about the peace process. How would you assess the stage of the peace process at this day and time? You know, as one seasoned observer said to me yesterday, isn't this wonderful? We have the start of indirect negotiations um, after 10 years fundamentally of breakdown that takes us right back um, to 1949. That's proximity talks. Why would, why would somebody celebrate indirect? Uh, it's, it is a very sobering moment that the furthest this president has been able to move the ball is to recreate a forum which existed in 1949. It wipes out um, fundamentally 20 years of effort in the 90s and the 80s and the 90s. Well, I think of Ralph Bunch running back and forth right. between two delegations. Right. So I think the way the Obama administration um, conceives of this is this is the most that it can get right now. There's also an electoral cycle that always operates in, in these negotiations and it's the US electoral cycle as well as the Israeli electoral cycle. So I would imagine that they think of this as a stopgap to get them from here and the form, they, the, this is to last only four months. Uh, we're fundamentally May. This will stretch on until after the November midterm elections. With, I expect, then, a push from the Obama administration in January of 2011. So it's a very temporary measure. Structurally, um, frankly, the conditions are not as conducive as for any kind of agreement as they were um, when the Oslo process started. Well, I remember when the Oslo process uh, broke down. And I met you, I think, on Devonshire, right outside, and you said, oh, I got strangled, I got. That's right. <laughs> I think you said, you That's were so right. furious. Because we, well, I'll put so much energy That's into right. it. That's right. And I think what's so interesting is looking back, um, and it was my sense actually even talking to the Palestinians and the Israelis who were heavily engaged as negotiators at the time, they did not understand that when a process like that breaks down, which it finally did right after Taba, that starting again is not simply a question of a few days wait and we start over. That when you, when you have a breakdown, you don't go back to the table under the same conditions. And in fact, it's been 11 years um, it was traumatized both populations. Destroyed the center in both societies that were in favor of an agreement, even though when you do the polling, you get this paradoxical result in both societies, as you know, Howard, that the majority support a two-state solution and the majority are pessimistic yeah, that their governments right. can reach agreement, right? So, in effect, both societies are traumatized. Certainly on the Israeli side, the broad center that supported a negotiating strategy is gone um, as a political force. And actually what you see in the longer term demographics uh, in the country, people on the Israeli side of the equation talk about demographics as an imperative for peace. But if you actually look at the demographics, what you see, the fastest growing segment of the populations, um, the ones that are having more children uh, mm -hmm. more quickly um, are not those who support a negotiated agreement at all. So time is actually not on the side of those who support a negotiated agreement. On the Palestinian side, um, these last four years, the open fracturing of the Palestinian national movement into two wings, both physically ensconced um, in, in two different on two different territorial units. Frankly, it's a catastrophe for but the Palestinian on the other side, movement. On the other side, there it has been something, I think, that has emerged that's positive. On the Israeli side, virtually the, the greater Israel idea is almost dead. Yes. Quite. And on the Palestinian side, the emergence of the technocrats have played yes. a significant role. Yes. Can the, you comment on those two? You know, I think phenomenon? the most interesting uh, there's much more, let me put it this way, there's more creativity right now on the Palestinian side of the equation than there is on the Israeli side. Be the most interesting political phenomenon right now is, is Fayyad, the Prime Minister, 
who is uh, shifting, trying very hard to shift the direction of Palestinian strategy to an institution building strategy on the ground, to a facts on the ground strategy, which Moshe Dayan would have understood and completely respected, to a strategy of nonviolence, uh, and arguing essentially that you build the Palestinian state from the ground up in the West Bank because the Fatah movement has no sway in Gaza at all, and the objective is to declare a state. And from everything I understand, uh, he has a commitment from the Obama administration that if negotiations do not succeed, direct or indirect, within a specified time period, the United States will support the declaration of an independent Palestinian state. What do you think of that? Let me tell you what many Palestinians think before I tell you what I think. Many Palestinians are deeply worried about that strategy. And they're worried about that strategy because they fear that once such a state is declared, and it will be where? In Gaza. Uh, with disputed borders, with no access to East Jerusalem, um, that that will then become the new status quo which will be frozen for years. And so that's why most Palestinians oppose that strategy. I actually think this is the only viable strategy for Palestinians to move ahead. And it eerily echoes um, the strategy that the uh, Zionist movement used from 1910, really, to 1940, build institutions on the ground, declare a state, accept a state in whatever territory um, one holds at the moment of the declaration, because a, an institutional base um, through which political processes can happen uh, is better than the, the terrible alternative that Palestinians have experienced. So what you envision then is effectively a de facto rather than a de jure. A de facto state, but the, the real challenge will be not only Israel's reaction, and this government has said, the Netanyahu government has said, that were an independent Palestinian state to be declared, it would consider that an act of war. Yeah, but why? I don't understand. I don't either. I've and never had an explanation a, of that. It's not answer. credible, and it's certainly not credible, uh, given that the Obama administration would recognize such a state. One of the earliest acts would be for the Obama administration to recognize the state. So frankly, I think that's blustered. The so real challenge would be um, for the Palestinian leadership to relate to the leadership in Gaza. How then is the Palestinian national movement permanently fractured? Is the Palestinian state only for the foreseeable future in the West Bank? Those would be huge problems for the Palestinian national and movement. And that's what I anticipate, but I don't know what your vision is. I, again, I think that the choices that the Palestinians have are between bad and less bad. Uh, they're far worse than they would have been um, in 1999, frankly. And we have a paradox here, Howard, and you would appreciate this. Time is not on the side of those in Israel who favor a two-state solution, and time is not on the side of the Palestinians uh, who favor a negotiated solution. So what we're seeing, in fact, is those um, who reject the rejection is on both sides, in a sense, of a negotiated agreement. Uh, they are becoming stronger, not weaker, over time. So the longer these choices are delayed, the less favorable the outcome will be. And it's for that reason that I think Fayyad's strategy um, is the only creative strategy that's being pursued right now in the region. Uh, I'm going to take the unusual step of ending with two points. Uh, when I was at Al-Quds University, I heard two positive things. The lawyer who was the head, a female head of the Al Fatah. I know her well. Yeah. You know her. Yes. Uh, the student. She was terrific. She yes. said, uh, "The settlements can stay. They'll just become Palestinian citizens." And then a, a technocrat said, "Look, the real issue is we have chairs to trade with all the countries except Israel, where we have 80 percent of our trade." Hearing those things and it being positively received by the Palestinians gave me a sense of optimism. That's, the, that's in a sense, the, the pragmatic, on-the-ground yeah. strategy moving forward. With that, thank you, Janice, again. You're wonderful. Such a pleasure to be with you, Howard.